ओके सो ड्यूरिंग रीड ऑपरेशन लेट्स से क्यू इज जीरो एंड द बीट इज वन सो क्यू आज ट्राइंग टू राइज एंड फ्लिप द डाटा ड्यू टू द करंट फ्लो थ्रू ए वन ट्रांजिस्टर राइट बट हियर द डी वन ट्राइंग टू डू द ऑपोजिट एंड वॉन्ट्स टू कीप क्यू नोट जीरो सो आई टोल्ड यू वी विल लेट द डी वन ट्रांजिस्टर विन सो हाउ कैन वी डू दैट सो यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड दैट डी वन नीड टू बी ए स्ट्रॉगर दैन द ए वन दैट मीन्स द करेंट फ्लो फ्रॉम द क्यू टू डी वन मस्ट बी ग्रेटर दैन द करेंट फ्लो फ्रॉम ए वन टू क्यू If we look at the current equation, this thing is constant in your transistor, and we also don't want to play with the supply voltage because this will affect the whole circuit. Also, the gate voltage is fixed. and coming from the q bar node the length of technology is fixed for a design so the only thing remaining is width and if we increase the width or the w by l ratio of a transistor the channel will get large and the more current will flow from the drain to source now you can say the more the channel size the more current will flow so we have to increase the w by l ratio or the width of the d1 transistor then the a1 transistor also from the ohms law we know that v is equal to ir here the v is fixed so the i is proportional to 1 by r so the current is proportional to W by L and also one by R. Weight by length ratio of D one should be greater than the weight by length ratio of the A one transistor. Or you can say R A one. Will be greater than the R D one. So this is the actually the read stability criteria. For right operation. you know that this excess transistor must be stronger than this p2 transistor because if we want to write one here we need to make the q bar 1 to 0 and to do that A two will help us, but not P two. So we have to increase the channel size of the A two transistor than the P two transistor. So in this case, for the right operation, the bit bar is zero and the Q bar is one, and to write one here, we need to 
make stronger the A2 transistor than the P2 transistor because here the P2 transistor who is trying to keep the node Q bar 1. This 3 margin determines actually the static noise margin or SNM of the SRAM cell and its various modes of operation. The static noise margin measures how much noise can be applied to the inputs of the two cross coupled inverter before the stable state is lost. We will calculate the static noise margin for this three operation in the last practical part of this series of videos. We can say that for the SRAM cell transistor, the NMOS cool down transistor in the cross coupled inverters must be strongest. Then the access transistor at the intermediate strength and the PMOS cool up transistors must be weak. So we can say that the IDS of cool down greater than the IXS and the I pull up. That's all for today. I hope you understand the read write criteria of an SRAM cell. If you have any confusion, please let me know in the comment section. In the next video, we will design and simulate an SRAM in Canon Virtuoso using 45 nanometer technology. Till then, stay safe and keep learning. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.